Hello and welcome back to One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. And tonight we're going yet again to this series' favorite decade, the 80s. In fact, we're going right back to the start of the 80s. 1982! Yeah, 1980, 1981. I made it through the rain. I kept my Yeah, that's not really the 80s. That's still the 70s, or possibly the aborted remnants of some other uncompleted decade. The real 80s, the big 80s, don't begin until MTV takes off, and music videos turn the pop world into the giant spectacle we know and love. From that point onward, the music world would be defined by image. For better or for worse. Ooh, I think I found myself a cheerleader. When MTV started out, it had about, like, five videos. Tony Basil's Mickey was one of them. Hell, the song practically is the video. The second you hear this song, you cannot help but think about Tony Basil in her cheerleader outfit running around and doing somersaults. For that matter, when you see cheerleaders, half the time you've got Mickey playing in your head. Or at least until that other song came around last year to replace it. Mickey is one of the most requested songs I've ever had. And whenever anyone anywhere does a ranking of top one hit wonders, Tony Basil is always right near the top. I mean, Christ, this one. Yeah, to put it mildly, it sticks in your head. And there's just the novelty of it, too. When you talk about one hit wonders, you instantly start thinking about the flukiest ones. And for most people, the video for Mickey has so superseded the song that Tony Basil doesn't even seem like a real artist. She seems like an actual cheerleader who fell into a music career by accident. Surely, if there's anyone I cover on this show who had nothing little blip of a career, it'd be her, right? Well, we'll see. Two, four, six, eight. Who will Todd evaluate? That person. What's her face? Woo! So, um, who was Tony Basil before they hit? Cheerleader? Yes, yes, she was a cheerleader in Las Vegas High School. That's not really relevant to this story. What is relevant is that she had a super long-ass career starting from the mid-60s and continuing to this day. Okay, not as a singer, to be clear. As a dancer slash choreographer. Here, uh, this is Viva Las Vegas, one of the few watchable Elvis movies. I'm told she's in there somewhere. And a bunch of other silly dance movies in the 60s. She also helped choreograph The Tammy Show, which was one of the first of the big giant all-star concerts. Uh, she got to work with James Brown and a whole bunch of other people. Oh, and remember that time the monkeys got really high and made a near unwatchable drug movie? Yeah, there she is again, dancing with Davy Jones. May he rest in peace. And while we're speaking of movies, she also had a pretty good off and on acting career. Uh, you know Easy Rider? One of the greatest movies of the 60s? Friend. Yep, there she is. And here she is in the Jack Nicholson movie Five Easy Pieces, also a critically beloved classic. I mean, she wasn't like famous or anything, but considering most actresses in Hollywood are lucky if they get to be in an Oreos commercial, she was already more successful at that point than many of the bands I cover on One Hit Wonderland were in their entire lives. And we've barely started the 70s yet. We've got an entire decade to get through before we even get to the music. What else? What else? Oh, uh, she worked with David Bowie. May he happily travel the cosmos into eternity. Choreographed his Diamond Dogs tour. She, uh, she also joined a dance troupe and sang on Saturday Night Live back in the super early days when Saturday Night Live had basically no idea what it was doing. Uh, she's good friends with David Byrne from The Talking Heads. She did the choreography for their landmark video for Once in a Lifetime. Where is that large automobile? And you may tell yourself, this is not my beautiful house. See, I always assumed this was some kind of neurological issue, but uh, apparently there's some very tightly planned dance steps. And just a second about music videos here, uh, when you read about the early days of MTV, it's kind of shocking how artsy and avant-garde it was. The musicians who were really excited about it were like experimental artists who liked the idea of making short art films as opposed to nowadays where it's just a way for Dr. Dre to sell stereo equipment. That's honestly where I think Tony Basil fits in the picture. Seriously, in, in the artsy new wave crowd, trying to do groundbreakingly creative things in an exceptional new medium. Seriously, yes, I'm, I'm still talking about Mickey.
I stay out too late. You know, I always just thought of this song as one of those silly, stupid, stupid, stupid joke songs that the 80s spat out, like Rock Me Amadeus or Don't Worry, Be Happy, you know, stuff that came out of nowhere and has nothing to do with anything. But as a preeminent historian of shitty music, it's my job to try and contextualize all this stuff. So, first off, this song is actually a cover. It's an obscure album track by a British band called Racy. Yeah, it was called Kitty at first, which makes sense because Oh Kitty, What a Pity scans a whole lot better as a lyric. It was written by the same guys who wrote Ballroom Blitz, but you know, like I said, it wasn't released as a single. It was just missing that certain something. What could it be missing? Of course, an obnoxious cheerleader chant. Look, I haven't come right out and said it yet, but let me be clear. I hate this song. I have never, ever liked this song. In fact, I think this song is what made me realize that just because a song has survived and been remembered doesn't mean it's any good. I mean, that's the way it works, right? If it stands the test of time, it must be something really good. No, no, it's not. I don't like it. Apparently, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people still really hate this song. It hasn't survived because it's any good. It survived because it is just one of the most unkillable earworms that God ever invented. And obviously, the main reason is the cheerleaderness of it all. Now, I, I don't know how it was in 1982, but I feel like cheerleaders probably weren't given a lot of respect back then. Hell, even the Grand Testament to cheerleading featured this line. Our cheerleaders. Cheerleaders are dancers who have gone retarded. I, I actually don't think that's fair. Also, we're not supposed to use that word anymore. Movie from 1998. It's, it's different now. Things, people get offended. Anyway, look at her. is just working it so goddamn hard in this video. I mean, you can't look away from her. And not just because many of us still have cheerleader fetishes left over from high school. Although I imagine that was also a big part of it. She choreographed and directed this video for the record. This is all her. You know she was pushing 40 when she filmed this? Crazy, right? I'd never have guessed. See, look at that. That takes a lot of effort. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed. But as for the actual song... Like, I do kind of think cheerleaders deserve as much credit as dancers, but singing, you know, maybe they actually are singers gone root. Uh, well, they're not good singers. It's it's just so grating. Ugh. Actually, now that I listen to it, it actually sounds a little like Elvis Costello back around that era. So I really should like it for that at least, but ugh, just the, the cheering, it just overwhelms the song. Christ, now I get why I hated Shake It Off so much. No one actually wants to listen to cheerleader chanting. I mean, it's not they're not cheering because anyone likes it. They're cheering to make sure the stoners don't fall asleep on the bleachers during pep rallies. I mean, they're just stupid chants. Anyone can do them. Here. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. Two, four, six, eight. What's that spell? 2468. Yay! I'm bad at everything. The follow-up single is called Shoppin' From A to Z. Well, only one way to find out what the hell this is. Shopping. Can't stop women from shopping. Shopping with a list from A to Z. Everything I needed for a happy family. A. Apple. B. Banana. C. Jelly. D. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but this appears to be a song about going grocery shopping. 
and then it lists a bunch of food in alphabetical order. I think I may have sung songs like this in kindergarten, maybe? You're making a weird meal, lady. You! Oh, what's the matter? Didn't have to get any xylophones for dinner? Come on, can't eat mac and cheese every night. Mix it up. Jesus. What on earth is the point of this song? Zippers? For what? Since when do supermarkets carry bags of zippers? What do you even need zippers for that doesn't already come with a goddamn zipper on it? There, there are actual food items that begin with Z, you know. You know, zucchini, ziti, zwieback, zabalioni. Oh no! I lost my lips! Oh, uh -uh. You know, I can only speculate why this song failed to take off, but my first guess is that it's a goddamn song about shopping from A to Z. Mickey, annoying as it was, it, you know, it's still pretty basic. It's a love song. That's what people want to hear. It's been focus grouped and it works. Who the hell writes a song about grocery shopping? I'll be the perfect life, buying groceries, buying, buying what you need. Good girl shop, bad girl shop, shopping. You know, I feel like good girls and bad girls didn't really have much to do with the lyrics. I think she was trying to trick us into thinking that this was a real song. As far as her music career goes, not a lot. There are a few other singles from this album, and they're all much artsier and less pop than those other two. Uh, three of the songs on her first album were written by Devo, so that should tell you what kind of musician she was. And the videos are all great, feature some pretty goddamn impressive dancing. <laughs> Look at her go! Sadly, none of the songs are all that great to listen to, in my opinion. You could call her a predecessor to acts where dancers first, musicians second, like, you know, Chris Brown or Jason Derulo. Except she's a way, way more interesting dancer. She released one more album in 1983, and judging by its first single, I'm, I'm guessing this one was trying to be a little more mainstream and less silly. I, I could honestly sit here and watch music videos from 1983 all day. I mean, this is no automatic man, but, you know, it'll do in a pinch. And that was it from her. She never released another album. She mostly quit music since she had like a billion other things she could be doing. Mostly she went back to choreography. Let's see, uh, did more work with Bowie, choreographed some movies. Believe me, I'm leaving out a ton of shit, like the short film she directed, the TV work. I can't possibly get to it all. She has done a lot of things. I feel like if you asked her, she'd laugh pretty hard at the thought that she actually needed to do better. No, she did pretty goddamn well for herself. Arguably, music is the thing she's least successful for, seeing as Mickey never actually made her much money. Most of the money from her hits tends to go to the songwriter, which, you know, she's technically not the songwriter, even though she wrote the cheerleader chant, which is the only part anyone remembers. But anyway, sometimes I do these episodes and I have to cancel them because I just cannot find any information about the band. I looked up her and I just found a goddamn ton of info from long ass articles and interviews and retrospectives. It's... No, she is very, very big and important. And she's still working today, in her 70s. So I mean this in the kindest way. No, she did not deserve better. Hey, Tony, you did fine, you did fine, so you don't mind. Hey, Tony! Hey, Tony! Yeah. Still don't like this song very much. 